Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video. Today I'm gonna to make a lidded box for my wife and I'm gonna use five quarter cherry that I can resaw right down the middle and I'm gonna use this lumber to get continuous grain all the way around the box and that makes it look pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you how to do that process coming up. Before I resaw this board at the bandsaw down the middle, I'm gonna flatten one face of the joiner and then I'm gonna square one adjoining edge. At the bandsaw, I'm gonna resaw this board right down the middle and I'm gonna put the freshly face jointed side against the fence of the bandsaw and my squared edge is gonna go against the table. And I have a three quarter inch wide bandsaw blade and it's from Highland Woodworking and it's specifically designed for resawing and it's called the Wood Slicer. And these are the blades that I use primarily for resawing. With both of the wreaths on faces flattened at the joiner, I can plane the opposite faces to thickness. So here's how we get a continuous gray match all the way around the box. Because this board was resawn right down the middle, this half of the board is a close mirror image of this half of the board. So when the box comes together, when it forms this corner over here, this part of the box is a mirror image of this part of the box, so it looks like it flows really nicely from one board to the next. And that is the same case on this corner over here. The same thing, this is a mirror image of this part of the box over here, so it flows really nicely and it looks like continuous grain match all the way around the box. I have my stack dado set installed and it's set to about a quarter of an inch wide. And I'm gonna make a groove at both the top and bottom of each side component, about a quarter of an inch down. This board was too wide for my joiner and I had to overhang the joiner by a little bit and this section that I couldn't get at the joiner, I'm gonna get with a hand plane. And I'm gonna use the hand plane in a manner that I'm referencing off of this already flattened surface as I'm bringing this down flush. I have the top dimension to thickness and I also have a dimension to rough length and rough width. And while you guys weren't looking, I did the same thing for the bottom panel. So the next thing I'm gonna do is rip these to their final width and final length. I need to make a groove all the way around the perimeter of the top panel so that it leaves a tongue that fits into the side pieces. And what I want is I want the top panel to sit proud of the sides and that's exactly what I'll have here. So in order to get the placement of the groove just right so that it, this tongue is the right size to go into this groove, I made a test cut on a piece of scrap wood. Now I have my stack data all set up and I have the fence set in the right place. And now I can actually make the cuts on the top panel. The 
the bottom panel is too thick to fit into the quarter inch groove in the side pieces. So I'm gonna make a rabbit all the way around the perimeter of the bottom panel. And because I already have my stacked dado set set up, that's what I'm gonna use to make the rabbit. I tilted my router table fence forward so that I could make a chamfer all the way around the perimeter on top of the top panel. Now I've already made two passes and I just moved the fence back a little bit more and I'll take one more final pass. Before I make the last two cuts, which will separate the lid from the box, I inserted wedges into the kerf and I secured the lid to the base of the box with blue tape. Now when I separate the, the lid from the box by making the last two cuts, it'll prevent the lid from moving around and getting damaged. The next thing I need to work on is the liner, which is gonna go all the way around the inside of the box. And it's gonna be tall enough so that it forms a little bit of a lip, and that lip is gonna secure the lid in place. I didn't show it, but I turned a knob at the lathe, and now I just need to part it off. If you like what I'm doing here at Garage Woodworks, I hope you'll consider becoming a supporter through Patreon. And you'll find a link to my Patreon page in the description below. And also, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click the subscribe button below. And I'll see you all next time.